welcome to NBTV, Native Butterfly Television Network. I am your host, Laura Maloney, local naturalist and program coordinator with Wren in the West Eugene Wetlands. Today in our studio, we are going to explore an, an exciting topic, beautiful butterflies, where we will explore three questions. The first is, what do snakes, butterflies, and fish all have in common? How are butterflies' feet similar to our tongues? And how do flowers look through the eyes of the butterfly? After that, we're going to take a quick musical break where you are going to get your butterfly feet and your dancing wings and join me for a butterfly song. After that, we will join Colin, local biological technician with the BLM, in the field as he conducts a Fender's Blue Butterfly Survey, where we will be looking for the endangered Fender's Blue Butterfly. Lastly, before the end of our broadcast, we will return back to the studio where we will be joined by a special guest, Fiona, the beautiful Fender's Blue Butterfly. Fiona will captivate us with the perils and the enchantment that makes up her life and tell us a little bit more about what it's like to be an endangered butterfly in the West Eugene wetlands. We are glad that you can join us today and we hope that you enjoy today's broadcast. <laughs> Our first question we're going to explore today is what do snakes, fish, and butterflies all have in common? Did you have some time to think about it? The answer is that they all have scales. Butterfly scales occur in a variety of different shapes but they're all thin and relatively flat. Some are short and wide, while others are thin, long, and more ribbon-like. And moths tend to have more scales than butterflies. Where do you think butterfly scales might be located? Did you have some time to think about it? If you thought that they're located on a butterfly's wings, you are correct. If you look really closely at a butterfly's wings with a microscope or a magnifying glass, you can see that each one of those wings are covered with thousands and thousands of tiny scales. So what do you think butterfly scales might help a butterfly with? The scales help a butterfly with flight and they're easily detachable and help free the wing if it's caught in a spider's web. It's also thought that scales might help a butterfly attract a mate. So lastly, the, the scales shape can um, interfere with light and help distract predators so that butterflies don't get eaten. So let's play a little game. I have some pictures that are close-ups of either butterfly scales, snake scales, or fish scales. Remembering the description of butterfly scales, that they are thin and relatively flat or more ribbon-like, let's see if you can guess which image belongs to which creature, butterfly, fish, or snake. Are you ready to begin? Let's take a look. This image here is of a fish scales. And this image is of a rainbow snake scales. The rest are butterfly scales. All right, great job with our first question, folks. Let's move on. The next question we're exploring today is, how are butterflies feet similar to our tongues? The answer is, that both are responsible for the sense of taste. Butterflies taste with their feet because their taste sensors are located there. They can taste by just standing on their food. They don't have mouths that allow them to bite or chew. Instead, they have a long straw-like straw structure called a proboscis which they use to drink nectar and juices from flowers. The last question we will be exploring in the studio today is how do flowers look through the eyes of a butterfly? My answer is pretty weird. No, I'm just kidding. Butterflies 
see colors and patterns that are invisible to man. The colors of flowers and the patterns of color on its own wings appear much differently to a butterfly. This is because the butterfly can see ultraviolet light. Ultraviolet light comes from the sun and it might cause sunburns in a man, but a butterfly uses it in many different ways for its vision and navigation. This is because a butterfly vision system is far different than that of a man. Butterflies have one pair of eyes on their head, but each one of those eyes is composed of thousands of image forming minute eyes called omatidia. Each one of those eyes in insects are called compound eyes, which allows a butterfly to enjoy a wide field of vision. Each omatidium is directed at a different angle than the others. This allows a butterfly to see every direction at the same time. And the image a butterfly sees is in the form of a mosaic. Heard that word before? A mosaic is often used to describe a work of art that is made of tiny little square pieces of colored glass. When put together, those pieces can form images. These are two mosaics that I imagine might be similar to how a butterfly might view these flowers. Let's get back to butterflies' color vision. So butterflies can see light in a different way that humans can. Here's different wavelengths of light. The wavelength of light that humans can often see in is from violet at the lowest end of the spectrum to red at the highest end of the spectrum. Butterflies cannot see red, but can see a form of violet called ultraviolet. And this form of violet people can't see. What I'll share with you now are some images taken with a digital camera that has a special filter to allow UV light to pass through the camera lens. These colors for these flowers are simply an artistic interpretation of what this flower might look like if it is seen through butterfly eyes. Here's our first flower. This is called bindweed, and this is how a human would view this flower. Using UV light, this is what that flower looks like. Here's another flower called teasel. This one is found in the West Eugene wetlands. Here it is with normal human vision, and here it is with butterfly vision. Here's my favorite one. This is a sunkfoil, which is a beautiful native flower to the West Eugene wetlands. Here it is with human vision, and here it is with UV light. Look at how the colors in the center of the flower change to become more vibrant under UV light. This is a primrose, a beautiful yellow primrose. Look at how that structure in the center of the flower changes to become more vibrant in UV light. So let's move on over to a special tool that we're going to instruct you to make from home. We call this our visionometer. So our visionometer is made up of a simple cardboard box with a hole cut, a square hole cut in the front of it. On the opposite side, we have tacked to the hole an old t-shirt that's cut in half to create a sensation of darkness when you put your head in the box. Our visionometer has a couple of handles on the side in order to give it a little more mobility when you're walking out into the field to view a flower. What I have here with me today is this beautiful vase of oxeye daisies. And I have a flashlight that can be purchased on Amazon um, that has a special UV light in it. See how it's a nice, beautiful violet color. So to use our fancy visionometer, I'm going to place the flowers inside this box. 
put my head over the top so I can see on the inside where it's nice and dark. Using my spare hand, I'm going to take the UV flashlight inside with me to take a look at how these flowers look in the dark with UV light. To make a simple version of your visionometer at home, all you'll need is a few tools. A box that's about to be recycled, some flowers, a scissors, a marker, and a UV flashlight. This is a task that you can do at home with some supervision, especially if you're still learning how to use sharp tools like scissors. First thing you're going to do on the intact part of your box is draw a nice square. The second thing you're going to do with parental supervision is use your scissors to cut the hole out of the box. So now you should have a nice square hole in your box. Using your visionometer and your UV flashlight, put a few flowers inside that hole in your box. Put your head on the inside with the flashlight and shine the flashlight very closely in the center of your flower. This activity works the best in a very dark room. And that's how you can make your very own visionometer from home. Thank you for joining me in the studio for our three questions. Now let's take a quick musical break. Are you ready to dance like a butterfly? I thought so. So what you're gonna need Grab whatever nice props you have laying around your house. Maybe they're beautiful feather boas to add some nice scale-like things to your body, just like a butterfly. If you have butterfly wings, I recommend you grab your wings and put them on your back. And then if you colored some of those flower templates that were attached to this video, Go ahead and get those flower templates out and place them on the ground because you're going to get ready to fly like a beautiful butterfly and start, start tasting some of these flowers with your feet. Butter, 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 fly, butter, 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 fly, butter, 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 fly. Butterflies take to the skies, flying flower to flower to flower, looking for what's sweet, tasting with their feet. Butter, butter, butter. Fly butter, 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 fly butter, 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 fly. Butterflies take to the skies, flying flower to flower to flower, looking for what's sweet, tasting with their feet. Oh, this is the story, or so I've been told by this little butterfly. Oh, she's looking pretty cold. There's been showers that just won't quit and rain she can't fight. Until one day she looked up and yelled, Hey, where's the sunlight? And lo and behold, the sun shone down. And there were more little butterflies flying all around, using UV light to find a flower of their own. Just a special place that they can call home. Butter, 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 fly, butter, 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 fly, butter, 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 fly. Butterfly, go on, take flight, fly, flower to flower to flower, looking for what's sweet. 
and taste it with your feet. One more time. Butter, 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 fly butter, 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 fly butter, 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 fly. Butterfly, go on, take flight, fly, flower to flower to flower. Look for what's sweet and taste it with your feet. <laughs> wow, what a fun song. Well, thanks for tuning back in. I hope you will join me as I get ready for my interview with Colin in the field. Here we are in the field with Colin Sayre, Plants Biological Technician with the Bureau of Land Management. Colin, what are we going to experience here today? Well, we're in the field here today to survey for the Fender's Blue Butterfly. Oh, that sounds exciting. Mm -hmm. Why do we survey the Fender's Blue Butterfly and um, what does that mean? Well, we're surveying them to find out how many there are of this particular site. And we're interested in that because they're an endangered species. Oh, wow. Um, why are the Fender's Blue Butterfly an endangered species? The main reason is habitat loss. And what do they look like? What are we going to be looking at in the field? Well, I've got a handy picture here that shows a female Fender's Blue taken in the area. And as you yeah, there's also some just fluttering around oh, in the background. With your eyes peeled, you might see a couple. It looks like they have a couple of rows of black spots along the wing margin and a black crescent on the upper wing. Um, are there any other species that look like the Fender's Blue Butterfly I'm out here? glad you asked. There is one that looks almost exactly like it, called a Silvery Blue Butterfly. So it sounds like we have a couple of different butterflies that we're going to be excited to catch out here today. Colin, can you show us how to catch a Fender's Blue Butterfly? I would love to. There are so many beautiful specimens out today. It should be easy to find one. I think I see one. Oh boy. Right over there. Okay. Gather close, friends. Got a live one. Colin caught a Fender's Blue Butterfly. We think we we're going to see if it's either a Fender's Blue or a Silvery Blue. Well, to me, this looks like very tricky. I think this is a Fender because there's a light outer band along the wing here. And that's one of the key characteristics to differentiate between the Fenders and the Silvery Blue. And this is all a very safe and humane practice. Catching oh, yeah. Butterflies. Oh, yeah. Catch and release. The butterflies are not harmed in any of the surveying. Excellent. Yes, once we identify it, we let them free. Be free. And there they go. <laughs> Hello again, and welcome back to the studio. With us today is our very special guest who flew in all the way from her sunny flower patch in West Eugene. Please help me and give a warm welcome to Fiona! Woo! Oh, just look at our folks. What a beautiful butterfly. Woo! Fiona, welcome to Native Butterfly Television Network. I am so pleased that you are able to join us today. Oh, thank you, Laura. I'm happy to be here. As I understand it, you flew over 10 miles as a crow flies to be with us today. Is that a lot for a butterfly? Well, Laura, while I tend to keep to my boundaries of my own flower patch, some butterflies, like my cousin Monarch, ride on air currents and thermals to travel up to 3,000 miles per year. Wow, that's a long way to go. I think 10 miles is a far distance. You must be really thirsty. Can I offer you a refreshment? Oh, that would be lovely. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So, this is, is, I hear this is one of your favorite foods, oxide daisies? Oh, the oxide daisy, yes, it is my favorite. As well as the narrow leaf onion, mariposa lily, small camas, woolly sunflower, Oregon geranium, blue flax, 
checker mallow, and vetch. What a beautiful variety of colors. And flavors. <laughs> where are these flowers usually found? Oh, typically the wetlands, uh, which is where I like to hang out. Are those really common habitats? Sadly, not really. Without human intervention and maintenance, wet prairies will become forests over time through a process called succession. Is that why you're so hard to find? Because of all of those limited prairies remaining, I hear that there's only one half percent that remain today. That's true. Habitat loss due to urbanization, humans building in my home, is one of the reasons why I'm endangered. I am so sorry to hear that, Fiona. If it's not too difficult for you to talk about, what are some of the other reasons why your numbers are declining? No, oh, thank you, Laura. It's, it's not too difficult. Other reasons are agriculture, silviculture, which is where humans grow trees to cut down, and roadside maintenance, like mowing the tasty flowers next to the roadside. Well, I think we should move on to a happier topic. <laughs> so you taste with your feet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know it's strange, but that's where my taste sensor sensors are. Oh, I, and you drink with, what is it called again? A proboscis. Your proboscis. Mm -hmm. I don't have teeth like you, Laura, that allow me to chew my food. Instead, I drink nectar through my proboscis, which is basically like a straw. <laughs> <laughs> cool. But you taste with your feet. Can you demonstrate that for our audience? What do you think, folks? Would you like to see Fiona taste with her feet? Yeah! What an enthusiastic <laughs> bunch! Of course I will! Fiona, thank you so much again for visiting us here on NBTV, Native Butterfly Television Network. It was truly an amazing experience to meet such a beautiful butterfly like yourself in person. Or should I say, in butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, thank you, Laura. This was such a treat, and I'm so glad I got to share my experience with you and all of you. <laughs> well, safe travels, Fiona. I hope you enjoy your sunny flower patch. Goodbye. Well, as Fiona travels back to her flower patch in West Eugene, I just want to thank you folks for tuning in to NBTV with me, Native Butterfly Television Network. I, again, am your host, Laura Maloney, and I hope to see you again real soon.